in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you.
Lord. Hallelujah. He's coming, church, soon. We don't know when, but you can, I can assure you it's going to be soon. Hallelujah. How many believe that you, you and I, you and I, we got to make the rapture? There's a lot of people who don't want to believe in it, but it's there. It's coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to, uh, I want to lay a little foundation for you before we go on. Amen. How many of you at home were trained? How many of you had parents that at times they whipped you, but at other times they, they made you a cake? Huh? Or, 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 or did you always just get cake? You know, you know what? The, the responsibility of every parent is to train their children so they can make it in life when they leave your home. When, when they leave your home, they've got to make it. They've got to know how to make it. They can't, are you, are you with me? They cannot, they cannot go out there in life, man, and fail. They, they got to make it, you know. So parents, you're going to train your children, and you're going to teach them. And sometimes you're going to have to grab them by the years, and especially the guys, the guys are stubborn. Sometimes you're going to have to scold them. Sometimes, sometimes you're going to have to even get the rod. And then sometimes you're going to give them ice cream. You're going to love on them because they've been good for a while. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. That's how Christianity is. Christianity is so heavy. I want to read something to you that I had marked here. Because uh, we we've got we've got to we've got to make it, church. I don't want to I don't want to stand before the Lord, and the Lord tell me that uh, that I didn't do my part. I want Him to know that I did everything I was supposed to do. How many of you? Know that even with your own children, because you're going to stand before the Lord with your, for your kids. And the Lord's going to tell you, hey, come over here. How come, how come you didn't teach them? How come you didn't grab them when you're supposed to? The Lord is going to, you, do you think the Lord's not going to do that? He's got it all written down. He's got an angel. I was telling, I think I was telling the, the, Brother Bernard and them the other night, Saturday, my son was going to school at a Christian school across the, the, the street from our house where he went to school. And one day I get his report cards and they're all F's. The whole thing was F's. But I had been watching him and I thought to myself, you know what, this kid's been staying up all night. You know, that was when texting was new. And they'd be texting each other all night long. I don't know who he was texting or who was texting him or what. But I knew that's what was going on. So he'd get up for school. And he was so tired he, could, he couldn't work. So one morning I got a report card. I said, all right. So he was going to get in his car. And I told him, no, 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 no. I said, get in my car. I said, I'm going to school with you. Amen. And he got in my car and I took him and I, got in, I went in there to the principal's office. I just walked in, you know where Mr. Abbott was. I just walked into his office and I said, I want to talk to you. And I told him, I want to know whose fault this is. I put those report cards right on top of his of his desk right there. I said, 
Whose fault is this? Is that my son's fault or is it your fault? I said, if it's your fault, I'm pulling him out of here right now. If it's his fault, I'm going to straighten him up. Pastor, you're mean. No, I'm not mean. I love him. I want, him, I want to train him to, to become what it takes. When he gets out there in life, he's already out there. And, and, uh, and, and brother, he's, he's got three kids. He's going to have three kids. His wife's expecting a baby now. But, but listen to me, I don't want to babysit. I just want to love these kids, love them, and send them home, sister. Like, like I said, vamonos, you go to your house. Let daddy take care of it. Is there anybody here with me? Okay, so, so I went and I, I, I saw those, I went home, took his computer, took his cell phone, took, took his games, took, I took everything he loved, I took it all away. And I did not give it back to him for a whole year. What a mean dad. Uh, what a mean dad. Well, what, what do you think about the Lord when, when, think, when, when you start acting up and he lets things fall apart for you? Ah, oh, nobody wants to talk to me, sister. You see, we've always had this picture of, of, of God being, only being a sugar daddy. But, but listen to me, he, he's not that. Listen to me, he'll correct you. The Lord will discipline you if he has to. Oh, Lord help me. Salvation is more than just saying yes to Jesus, come into my heart. Coming to the Lord, coming to this altar and saying, Lord, I accept you, I receive you. This girl here came from California with her son, with her, with her son, <laughs> with her husband. I think sometimes she thinks he's, he's, he's your son. Uh. And, uh, She came from California, and the first Sunday she was sitting there, she got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. They went home. They went back to California and and got rid of everything and moved out here. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Amen. So, so I, want you, I want you to see this because God is powerful. God is more concerned, listen to me, than, than, than giving you all the goodies in life. We love the goodies. But he's more concerned about your character and who you become so that you can walk from the beginning all the way to the end where you're not going to give up on the Lord halfway or in between somewhere, and just walk away from God. You are going to walk with the Lord all the way. Say it with me, all the way. When hardships come, when, when the enemy is attacking you, when he's doing all kinds of things, when the washing machine is broken, and you can't wash your, your, your husband's shortness, brother, let me tell you something. You're going to keep walking with the Lord. Come on. When there's no gas in the car, when the car is low and, and there's no gas and you know you need gas. You know, uh, I, 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 I'll tell you one thing. One time my brother, I, I used to help my brother. I, I was uh, help him there at the church, at his church. And one morning I went in and I was supposed to pick up some uh, three or four guys that worked with us in the mines. We used to work in the mines about 30 miles away from, from Grants. We used to work way out there in the desert. 
And it was my turn to pick these guys up and take them to work and bring them back home. And my brother gives me a list like that of, of people he wanted me to go visit around town. So I went. But everywhere I went, the, 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 the needle started going like this. And it was empty. It was going on empty. And I, I wouldn't tell anybody anything, but I was talking to God. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, how am I going to pick these people up? How am I going to take them to work? The last person I went to visit was in the supermarket during grants. And when I walked in and looked for him, he wasn't there. So I'm walking out, and there's this other preacher walking out with me from another church, and we're talking. I'm walking out from the front doors, and you know where we lived was a little windy. So I'm walking out like that, and for some reason I look down, and right in front of me was some money. I'm not going to tell you how much. Because I don't want you to walk around like this. And I, I picked it up, and I'm looking around, I, I said, somebody wants to drop this. And I'm trying to find the, the person that it belonged to to give it to. And the pastor is laughing at me. He said, son, he said, don't you know when God wants to bless you? God put that money there for me so I could put gas, so I could go. Take this. Oh, you're not hearing me. So, so what I'm saying to you is don't be afraid. God's going to take care of you. Serve him. You serve the Lord. The Lord will take care of you. He's, he's not. Listen to me. Say it with me. He's not. Everybody. He's not. A deadbeat dad. He will take care of you. Amen. Say it with me. He'll take care of me. Amen. He's going to do everything he has to, to see us through. Amen. Praise his mighty name. Amen. So I want to read this to you. I found it earlier at home. And it says, In just six inches of water, a teacher was doing her best to discredit the miracles of the Bible. She said, take for instance, the crossing of the Red Sea. We know this body of water was only six inches deep. That's what she said. Okay, it wasn't, it was, but she said that. Immediately from the back of the room came the remark, praise God. Some kid yelling this from the back of the room. For the miracle, praise God for the miracle. And annoyed, the teacher annoyed with his remark, says to him, what miracle? And he says, well, explain, explain the boy, the Lord must have had the Lord had to drown the whole Egyptian army in just six inches of water. <laughs> ah! What a big God! We, I mean, we serve a big God. Yes. Amen. I want you to go with me to the book of Exodus. Or, yeah, Exodus. And we're going to go to chapter 12. But I want to lay a little foundation for you because Moses had been called as a baby to be the deliverer of, of Israel. He was rescued in a basket and the Pharaoh's daughter found him and took him in. And so he was able to grow up 
safely. Now, he wanted to help the, the Israelites be delivered. They had been captive, captive or living in Egypt for over 430 years or 440 years. And so here they are, and, and, and he saw this Egyptian hitting an, an, an Israelite. And Moses went and killed him and buried him in the sand, thinking nobody saw it. Let me say this to you. How many of you have ever hid things from the Lord? Oh, nobody wants to cop out. How many of you have ever hid something from the Lord? Yet the Lord, the Lord knows. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, nothing that is done in darkness, but that's hid, and that you do in darkness and is hid, he's going to bring it to light. He'll reveal it. Come on, are you with me? He'll reveal it. So here Moses, he sees two Israelites fighting. He sees two people from New Hope Ministries arguing and fighting. And he goes up there and says, hey, how can you do that? You're brothers. You're sisters. And, and they said, what are you going to do to us? Are you going to kill us the way you did the Egyptian? All of a sudden he realized it, was, it wasn't hid no more. It was brought out of the open. But how many know, listen to me, that God has ways of dealing with each one of us. See, see, our problem is this, is that we want God to pat a cake with our lives. But he won't. It costed him everything he was on a cross just to save you and to save me. Everything. So he's not going to panic with it. You have to tell yourself tonight, if I'm going to serve the Lord, I've got to serve him all the way. Yes. Say it with me, I've got to go all the way. I can't go halfway, church. You've got to go all the way. So here Moses, he runs, and he runs to the desert. And he's there for 40 years. And in 40 years of being in the desert, 40 years, how many of you have, 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 have thought, well, I, 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 it's like God has forgotten me. Sometimes I don't even feel God. And how many of us go through that? I mean, there's a lot of, man, I don't know what to do. I mean, I pray and I pray and I pray and nothing happens. And the Lord has us in the desert. But he hasn't forgotten you. Say it with me. He has not forgotten me. He's right there with me. Are you here tonight? And, and so here's Moses, and then he get, get, grabs a glimpse of the burning bush, and him and God have this conversation. We, we dealt with that the other day. But Moses was there for 40 years, and I want to say this to you. I want to say this to a lot of you that are here. Listen to me. We're more in a hurry than God is. If I don't get it done now, if I don't get out there and, and, and save the whole world, the world will die without me. The, the, the world will, will die and, and go to hell. And if I don't save the world, and we should tell everybody about the Lord. But you have to remember something, that he is the Savior. Yes. Give him praise. And so the Lord begins to work on us. And, and, and many times it takes us through our, our trials, our problems, our desert, our Gethsemane. 
He takes us through, through stuff, and sometimes we, we, we don't want to go through it. And, and I think I've already gone through too much. And, but, but, but you don't understand that God is working on you. He's, he's doing something in your life. Oh, you're not hearing me. You know, when Moses went into the desert, he was a prideful man. When he walked out of that desert to go back to Egypt, he was a humble man. He was not the same. He allowed God to change him. I said he allowed God to change him. Are you with me, church? So, so I, want, I want you to hear me. Now, here there are miracles. We serve a God of miracles. We serve a God of the impossible. He can do anything. He's done miracles for me. Big miracles. That, that man, I knew, I knew there was no way out. And yet God performed miracles for me. He got me out. I knew it was God. But I want to say something to you. I want you to hear me. The majority of people get miracles, the majority of them, I'm not saying all of them, but I'm saying the majority of them don't serve the Lord. Miracles don't change them. And I'm not saying we should do miracles. We need to pray for the sick. We need to pray for deliverance. We need to pray for cast out devils. You know, I, I, when there's a demon-possessed person in the church, I send them to, to Donnie. Yeah. And sometimes I send him and his brother out there to, to pray for these people. But, but look at this. Look at this. We think that, man, if God could only give my brother a miracle, if God could only, li listen to me, miracles don't always change them. I wish it were true. I if, if it were true, this place would be so packed, you, would, you wouldn't even believe it. Miracles. Look at every miracle, 10 miracles that Moses performed in Egypt and it wouldn't change Pharaoh. Is that a trip? You know what tra transformed Moses? The desert. The hot sun, the trials. The problems. Not knowing what to do. Knowing that he couldn't change things. Knowing that everything was going to fall apart if, if, if God didn't do something. He was a believer in God. What, what, what touches people is when we go through the desert, the hardships. But look at this. He's, he's in Egypt, and there's ten miracles performed, ten plagues. Miracles. I don't know about you, but every one of those miracles... I would have been a, I would have been a repentant person, man. I would have I would have repented, man. My God, they would repent. Ain't that a trip? Even look at this. Even the children of Israel that were their captive were not changing. You you gotta want to change. You, you got to want to let God form your spirit. Listen, he you, you takes you through the desert to form you, to build you, to make you what he needs you to be, not what you want to become. If I was to ask you, what do you want to be? I want to be like a movie star. I said, What?
The movie stars don't even know what they are. They don't know if they're women or men. Man, uh, uh, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> are, you, are you with me, church? But God has, God has, listen to me, God has a purpose and a mission for you. Now listen to me, if you're writing anything, write this down. His purpose is that you become like him. That you become like Jesus on the inside. And whatever it takes for him to transform you, to change you, he's going to do it. He's going to work on you. Anybody home? I said, anybody home? See, there, there are people, and you want me to tell you how you know you're not done? Because every time something goes wrong, you want to quit. That's the biggest sign you got that you're not done. Oh, Lord. When you get up in the morning and you hate to look at, you hate to even look at your Bible because you know God's going to talk to you. What a trip. I said, what a trip. But he'll take you, listen to me. In the book, I want to tell you what transforms people. The only thing that can transform people. I want you to go with me to Exodus chapter 12. The only thing. Brother, I wish that everybody that would hear me preach. Brother was asking me earlier if we were still on TV and all that. I said, yes, yes, we're on, on TBN and then we're on Ventana TV in, in California. And, and then we're, we're on YouTube and we're on, on, I don't know, we're on everything, I guess. But, but what I want to say is this. I wish that everybody that heard me would be transformed. But I know they're not. Amen? Praise the Lord. So look at this. So the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, the ten, the ten things were done, the ten plagues were done with, and yet they were still in Egypt. Now God, now God was going to show him how to do it. God was going to show, him, show you and me how it is done. Is there anybody here? Okay. Listen, you, you, there's a lot of things. You want, to, you want to get into books and go to Bible school and, and do all kinds of stuff? Listen, there's a, the, the greatest teacher you're going to have is Jesus. The greatest teacher you're going to have is life. Life. It'll make you or break you. So look at this. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be to you the beginning of months, the first month of the year to you, he said. Tell all the congregation of Israel on the tenth day of this month, they shall take every man a lamb or kid according to the size of the family of which he is the father. A lamb or kid for each house. Every Israeli family, there was over two or three million Jews living there and they all had to have a lamb. That's a lot of lambs. Is there anybody here? 
This was no little task. This was a big task. How many know getting your family saved is not no small task? It's a big task. Because you're not only fighting your family, but you're fighting every demon in hell. What a powerful, powerful thing. Look at this. And if the household is too small to consume the lamb, let him and his next door neighbor take it according to the number of persons, and every man according to what each can eat shall make your count for the lamb. They were going to share a lamb if, they, if, it, if those are a lot of people in their family. Let's go on. Your lamb or kid shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, and you shall take it from the sheep or the goats. Now, now imagine this. Without blemish, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, with no blemish, no mark, nothing he could be accused of. I mean, he was as holy as can be. Anybody here? Praise God. Look at this. And, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall each kill his lamb in the evening. Now look at this. They have to take the lamb and take it home and feed it and brush it, keep it clean. Have you ever seen kids find a little puppy? Huh? Man, I've been wanting a dog for a long time. I had a Shih Tzu that, that loved me. Man, that dog loved me. After 17 years, he died. And I say, I had a dream. And they said, what was the dream? That, that you were allowing me to bring a dog home. <laughs> I'd like to have two German shepherds. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 that was not a dream, that was a nightmare. <laughs> I said, wow, what love. And you shall keep it until the 14th day. They, they had to nourish that lamb. They had to get that lamb fat. They had to feed it. They had to comb it. They had to love it. Had, and the whole family was around that lamb. Till the day that they had to kill it. Listen to me. You know the problem is we know about the Lord but we don't get close enough to him to brush him and embrace him. Oh, you're not hearing me, church. We're so caught up in life. Well, yeah, I know Jesus is there. I know, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you. And that's it. Boy, it's quiet in here. Imagine getting a hold of the lamb and feeding on the lamb and the lamb feeding on you. You think that, you think that Jesus don't want to want you to feed him? That, that's all part that's all part of salvation. Amen. That's all part of salvation. Spending time with, with the lamb. Amen. Nourishing yourself on that lamb. 
God can heal, deliver, set free, do all kinds of things. I've seen a lot of drug addicts set free. I told you one time I was sitting in a little, a little room. Man, we couldn't even hardly sit in there, man. It was, it was about this big, like this. And this guy, they had this inmate there. He was sitting there. He had been a drug addict since he was 11 years old. He never drank or nothing. All he did was shoot heroin. And, and he was sitting right there with me. And he was in his 30s. And I preached in a jail. And he told me, he says, I heard you preach here, but I want to know something. He says, do you think God could set me free from this habit I've had since I was 11 years old? And I told him, no, I don't think he can. I know he can. So you and I, you know, you got to be sure that you're sure that it's going to happen. So I got him by the hand, we're so squeezed in there like that. You know, I'm a skinny guy, you know, but this guy was big. So I grabbed him by his hand over here, and he has my hand, and I started praying, Lord, we take authority over this habit. Yes, 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 we yes. break the stronghold of the devil. Yes. Look, man, all of a sudden, this guy scared me, man. The Holy Ghost hit him, and he's trembling from his head all the way. But I mean, trembling, sister. And I'm looking at him like that, man, and I'm saying, Wow, what is happening to this guy? The Lord delivered him right there. Years, years later, he went to federal prison. He went out, went to the state prisons, went out. He went in and out all over. Every time he came out, he came to see me. Miracles. Imagine. He used to be a foreman at King Super's warehouse. And he left that warehouse because he became a heroin addict. He was, he was running hard. He had been around that place for 10 years. And I prayed for him one day and I said, Lord, would you give him his job back? I said, go get your job back at King Super's. He went back and they gave him his job. Oh, you better give the Lord praise. Ah. Huh? But do you think that changed him? Brother, I would have out oh, man my God. Huh? But no. But on his dying bed, I get a phone call. He wanted to see me. And I went to see him. And I prayed for him. I prayed him back to the Lord. I said, you're going to go into eternity in a few moments. I said, but you can't go like that, brother. He's given you too many miracles. You've got to, you've got to let Jesus into your heart, I says. You can't get into heaven without him. You, you got to, this is what I told him, you got to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. So, so look at this. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood... You know what sets people free? The blood. You, you know the problem with miracles? They're good. They're, I love miracles. But you know the problem with it? It gives us a big head. See what I just did. But they're not saved. Do you know there's a majority of people that believe all over, all over this, this cities and, and the metropolitan area, they, they believe that because they believe there's a Lord that they're saved. 
but they got to be born again. The blood. La sangre de Cristo Jesús. It's the blood that saves you, sets you free. It's the blood that saves your family. It's the blood that he shed upon the cross of Calvary. It's the blood. Without the blood, brother, we ain't got nothing. We just don't got nothing. Is there anybody with me here? And look at this. And they shall take of the blood and put it on the two side posts and on the lintel above the door space of the houses in which they shall eat the Passover lamb. The, la the side posts, the top, you know, representing the cross. Ten, ten miracles, ten plagues would, would make that man move. He would move. Ten plagues, can you imagine? Flies and lice and grasshoppers and you name it, everything. Losing the, the, the water turning to blood and, and, and you, you, I mean, you they, name it. But none of those things made Pharaoh change his mind. Is there anybody here with me tonight? Yes or no? Yes. But the blood, la sangre de Cristo Jesús, the blood of Jesus sets the captive free. The blood. Now, I'm not telling you not to do miracles. Do all the miracles you want. But I'm telling you tonight, if they're going to be really delivered, they're going to be saved. They've got to come through the cross. There is no other way. He is the way. And Jesus, remember that the Old Testament is a reflection of the new. What Jesus did on the cross was to save the whole world. It was to set the whole world free. But the, the problem is, is that everybody wants miracles, but they don't want Jesus. How do you know? Because when Jesus touches you, and he really touches your life, you're going to change. There, there's transformation that takes place. Oh, you're not hearing me. Transformation that comes. It'll, it'll come. It'll take place. And no matter, listen, I remember when I went to church, man, the Lord spoke to me and told me, Ray, it's now or never. You're going to give your life to me now or never, never. Don't ever bother again. I went that night to the church and I said, I'm giving you my life. And brother, let me tell you, I, 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 had, I was there at that altar. We don't do it anymore. Now we, we all just pray the same prayer and we go home. But before you wanted to get saved, sister, you had to go to that altar and call out to God for yourself, for your salvation. Anybody remember that? And I remember I went, I went up there, man, and I'm, and I'm praying, and I'm asking the Lord to forgive me. Man, it's, it's like when we were kids, like I told you the other day, that my, we were Catholic, and my mom would send us to, to confession. Man, we would make up little sins so that the priest wouldn't keep us there. Man, but we were the worst sinners in the block. We're thieves, and you name it, man. We, I mean, but the priest didn't know that. Are you with me, church? Right there at that altar, man. I came to the priest of all. And I remember the enemy telling me something. Listen, I'm telling you this because this happens in a lot of churches. 
I was praying and the enemy came and looked, uh, told me, look, all these people are looking at you and there's nothing happening for you. So I got up and I went back to my bench. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me as I was sitting there. He said, I saw a girl that was way in the far corner of the altar. She began to speak in tongues. And she got up in the middle of that whole crowd. She got up and she went all the way to where I was at. And she grabbed me by my arm. The Lord said, she's coming for you. And she grabbed me by my arm and took me back to the altar. And she knelt right there with me till we prayed through. We, listen, listen, listen to me. You know the problem? Nobody's praying through to the blood. We want it all instantly. We take that prayer, that sinner's prayer, we take it like, a, like an instant thing. We just push the number two button on the microwave. But I remember kneeling there, brother. I didn't get up from there, man, till I was transformed. I was changed. Oh, you're not hearing me. Is there anybody here with me, church? So we're going to go to the next phase. You get saved. Look at this. Let's go on with this. They shall eat the flesh that might, uh, that night roasted. You had, they had to roast the meat. They could not bake it. They could put it in the microwave or, or put it in the oven. And no, they had to roast it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Eat that lamb that you raised, that you loved, that you tendered, that you, I mean, you gave it everything it had, and now you have to eat it. Lord, and then we leave. But we never break through. It's not till you break through that you're going to get what you need. Are you with me here tonight? It isn't until you break through that you're going to get what you need. Now look at this. Let's go on. Eat not of it raw, nor boiled, it, boil it with water, but roast its head, its legs, and its inner parts. Roast it. I want it completely roasted. I want you to eat it, roast it. I don't want you to microwave it, put it in the oven. I don't want you, you know what, what he's saying there? Look over here. Because a lot of people have a Christianity that's raw. Oh, Father, they're, they're giving me that eye again. I need some bodyguards up here. A lot of people have a Jesus that goes with them to the bar. And they go in there and drink and talk about the Lord to everybody. But you know what those people in the bar are, are looking at? Say, this guy's the same as I am, man. What, what is he going to give me? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. It's heavy, isn't it? Because we can't have a raw salvation. We got to have a roasted salvation, something that's all the way. So it, be, it has to be all the way. Oh, give him a big praise. All the way, not halfway. What a powerful God we serve. 
Look at it. Let's go on. You shall let nothing of the meat remain until the morning. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. I know that the Word of God blessed you richly. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to Him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Him, today would you say, Lord Jesus... I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you till the next time. Amen.